after President Ramaphosa suspended tax boss Tom Moyani today. We're joined by someone who worked closely with Moyani. He was also at SARS for over a decade. This is the former SARS spokesperson Adrian Lekay uh, saying that Moyani repeatedly sidelined him from major decisions, including, uh, of course, some of the decisions that were made um, while he was still at SARS. He joins us now on the suspension of his uh, former boss. Good evening, Adrian. You know, if, if perhaps to put it into context, some have uh, described Moyani as being, uh, as not being rather a great friend of either the truth or the law. From your experience of the man, is that a fair statement? Uh, good evening, Kathy. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in this program. Uh, you may be aware that there's already a 12 million rand defamation suit against me by SARS and Mr. Moyani. So please don't ask me to answer <laughs> to inflammatory observations that may land me in more trouble. Um, but yes, we all had our fair share with difficulties working with, working with Mr. Moyane. Um, I think we should all be relieved and commend the president for taking the most decisive action he could in these circumstances by suspending the SARS commissioner and by instituting an acting commissioner for the next 90 days in terms of the law. You congratulate the president on taking this decision, but to take you back, Adrian, in 2015 already, you put together a memorandum that you uh, had expected would have been tabled before parliament, warning about what was going on at SARS under Moyane's watch, and yet nothing ever became of that memorandum. It seemed to simply disappear. Remind us again of what exactly you warned about at the time. Um, yes, I think uh, one expected that there would be a different political response. By March 2014, when I wrote the letter to the Standing Committee on Finance and the Standing Committee on Intelligence, I basically argued to Parliament that as a citizen, as a taxpayer, and as a former SARS official, I'm increasingly concerned about the actions the institution is taking against some of its top leadership figures um, the labor practices that are being applied to get rid of people, that SARS is fast losing its best experience in its operations, legal and other parts of the institution, and that we face the risk of real revenue collecting challenges in future if the purge of, of these uh, individuals continue and if the management style of Mr. Moyane continues not to be challenged and him not to answer for the actions he's instituted. By that time, he had already suspended the Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Pillay. It was taken on review to court, and Mr. Moyane lost with costs. Um, it was a period of high tension in the institution, and all of the good work until 2014 that we were used to, that some of us contributed to in a very small way, was systematically being undone in a very short space of time. Now, 2015 was a very different place politically. I think from 2016, 2017 and onwards, more information came avail became available publicly, more research was done, and it could put SARS in a list of institutions that became victims of state capture. For some in politics and in high office, the Revenue Administration with its investigative and enforcement capabilities and its institutional independence became a threat. Um, it became a threat to certain political interests. It became a threat, a threat to a particular family and their business interests in South Africa. And the, it had to be captured. And that is still my contention why a number of individuals had to be hounded out of the institution. And we now see the problems manifest itself as fiscal problems in the form of under collection of revenue, which forces the National Treasury to borrow more money year on year. But we'll talk about the cost that has come to the individuals that are involved in this, yourself included. But for a moment, let's just talk about the accountability of Parliament and the fact that they did not take up this, um, this warning, as it were, that you put before them. I mean, today, are you going to be seeking answers about why that never happened? Look, I think the parliamentary option is gone. Uh, nothing much materialized from it. Um, I think what is before us now is 
the real challenge that a lot of work needs to be done in institutions like SARS to get the right leadership back, to restore them to its former capabilities. Um, politically, 2015, as I've said, was a, was a much different time than where we are now. Um, I think you, you would have seen since then, Parliament has found its own voice um, under, for example, Mr. Jackson Tembo as the chief whip. Um, parliamentary committees became far more assertive. I think people didn't fully understand the state capture project going back to 2015 as we do today. I think civil society today is far more aware, far more mobilized to bring legal action on the one hand, to do research about what is happening in our public institutions on the other hand, and also to mobilize people and to spread awareness that says the Hawks, the NPA, SARS, state institutions, or SOEs like the NAO, ESCOM, and Transnet, where the real big budgets for capital expenditure are, those had to come under political control. And how do you get them under political control? You take out the people in those institutions, you run disinformation campaigns against them, and you put your own people there, whether it's on the board or in the form of SARS, whether it's the new executive that today exists. Um, that is the system by which people were hounded out of institutions. And I think it was critical to get the revenue authority under political control from the period of 2014 onwards. Uh, given the, the cost that, that it has come at, not just to you personally, Adrian, but also, you know, at least 39 senior managers that, um, th that, that resigned, and they, of course, are just among many who were part of the hemorrhaging of staff at SARS, are you content with simply letting it be water under the bridge now that there is a level of vindication to what you were trying to say at the time? Um, I think the first point is other people suffered far more than I have. Where we are now is that uh, Mr. Ivan Pillay, the former Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Johan van Lochrenberg, a former Group Executive of SARS, they still have to appear in court on the 9th of April they were served with a summons by the NPA two weeks ago on a new set of charges um, that they have to present themselves before court. These charges emanate directly from a complaint le uh, with the Hawks in May 2015 where Moyane is the complainant. You have a situation where people still have to defend themselves. Mr. Pele was charged or there was an attempt to charge him already back in 2016 with Mr. Pravin Gordon on the same set of facts, on the same case number where Moyane is the complainant. So the persecution of key former SARS officials continues. They have to defend themselves before court. They have to appoint lawyers every time. They have to pay those legal costs themselves. And they face the real possibility of a criminal prosecution. All of this happened or was instituted by Moyane, and at some point proper accountability must be held uh, or must be called for for these actions. Whether the NPA proceeds with that uh, court process and the actual criminal prosecution or not, we'll see. Whether the individuals themselves bring some kind of action to challenge it, we'll also have to wait and see. But the fact is people like that um, have suffered and they continue to suffer. And all of this is based on this rogue unit, rogue unit story that SARS has been advancing since 2014. A story which has now been firmly discredited in the public domain. It is based on the investigative work KPMG has done, these criminal charges that I'm referring to, based on the work of KPMG. KPMG have distanced themselves and recalled some of their findings and recommendations in that regard. Yet still we see a criminal prosecution. So there's a vindictiveness within law enforcement and the former SARS regime that continues to this day and people again are being victimized and they have to defend themselves and as the public we must support them. As taxpayers and the public we must demand answers and we must demand accountability. What does the fact that at the end of the day Moyane is suspended, he's not been completely removed uh, from the organization, what does that level of presence do um, in relation to these cases that you're talking about, in relation to the web, the network that has been set up and what it means for um, an actual reform or transformation of the organization? I think like anyone, he can approach the courts to challenge his suspension if he gets proper legal advice for him to do so. 
I can only hope, and again as taxpayers we must insist on this, from SARS under the new Acting Commissioner and from the new Minister of Finance, Minister Nene, that when Moyane goes to court to challenge the President's decision to suspend him, which is his right, let him pay his own legal costs. Because everyone he suspended at SARS, in the form of Mr. Pillay and Mr. Pete Richer, who you reported earlier on, in 2014, December, were suspended. They approached the Labour Court. They were not given any access or financial support for that litigation. They had to pay for it themselves, and in the end, they were vindicated. Um, the Labour Court found that Tom Moyani's actions to suspend them based on these rogue unit allegations and the report by advocate Sikekane was unlawful and illegal. Both individuals had to be reinstated and they were suspended within days after being reinstated. And through all these dis disciplinary processes, through the criminal investigations that followed with the Hawks, they had to defend themselves and pay for it themselves. So let Mr. Moyane exercise his rights, let him go to court and let him pay for it himself. Uh, it is strange how the wheel turns uh, in a mere three years, but that is where things stand at the moment. All right. Thanks for coming on to Newsnight tonight. Adrian Leque giving us his take on this, the suspension of SARS Commissioner Tom Moyani by President Cyril Ramaphosa earlier today.